Hi, I'm Callum Delietto, and we're here today at Emirates' London HQ to talk with Alison Ward, the Vice President of HR and Recruitment for Emirates. Hi Alison, thank you very much for seeing us today. Thank you for having me. The first thing that comes to mind when I think of an airline mm -hmm. is your workforce is incredibly mobile. They're all over the world, they're flying here, they're in everywhere. What, what kind of challenge does that present for you? Well, the majority of our workforce in terms of our crew and flight crew actually live in Dubai. Everyone lives in Dubai. The only team that live overseas are those that are based in our countries overseas and that's handled by a separate recruitment team. So everyone lives in Dubai, they're based in Dubai, our hub is Dubai, our flight crew and cabin crew leave from Dubai on trips and come back to Dubai. And that's the model that um, has been set up by the company. They're mobile, in fact, in the sense because they're not in Dubai all the time. Yeah. So that's a challenge with regarding to the human resources aspect and, and keeping in touch. However, with the, the technology today and rosters are online and things like that, then the team is in touch, but they're not in the office all the time uh, being mobile. We, to get that mobility and to get the cosmopolitan nature of our workforce, we go overseas to recruit. So that, that is where we go internationally yeah, to find our, our cabin crew. And is it easy to, to lure people internationally to Dubai? We, we work very uh, closely with Dubai Tourism, so we're not only the airline of Dubai, we're also recruiting to, for people to live in Dubai. So to live in Dubai, it takes a certain um, adventurous spirit, or that cosmopolitan nature. So we look for people that can relocate from their home country. It could be the first time they've ever moved overseas or travel overseas. So we need to be very careful that they then can adapt in Dubai. So we work very closely with looking after the benefits for them when they move to Dubai. We, um, so if we can maybe stick to cabin crew, for example, or flight, flight, get, flight deck crew, we provide accommodation for them. So cabin crew provide accommodation. Uh, we provide the uniform and dry cleaning. We provide their transport to and from work and to or from training. So basically we've, we've covered all their basics for them, their accommodation, their utilities are provided. Their, their, their spending money is what they earn and they can save. And then they also get to travel the world. So as a company, we look after the benefits of for them as well so that they have almost a carefree life in Dubai. We've covered all the, the necessary daily events like the power and the water bills and then they can concentrate on their job and being that customer um, facing interaction with our customers, yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm jealous. Yeah. Jealous. So, um, you, you're quite uh, unique in, in the sense of with your recruitment campaigns, you know, you've, you've splashed them on like trams and, and, and buses and uh, just a little bit more about that and how that's working for you. So the recent pilot uh, brand campaign, and, and was also to some degree the cabin crew campaign, but let's look at the pilot campaign. We have, um, we're trying to reach areas and target uh, audiences that we may have not touched before in a traditional sense. So for example, in Budapest, we put an advert on the tram. We've, um, in winter in Waterloo Station, we had a large ticker tape banner with the temperature that was in Dubai and the temperature it was in England. There was a big, <laughs> Big difference, and we gave out hand warmers with Emirates on, saying that you know maybe you should look for a career in Dubai uh, because it's always sunny. Very clever. Um, yes, so we try and target. We've got a very, uh, very innovative corporate communications team that look at different ways to, uh, that we can advertise and attract. So one, it could be a different thing for cabin crew than for flight crew or for IT specialists. So it's trying to get ahead and tap into those markets with an advertising or brand campaign to get those candidates we need to apply online. Once you've got them, once you've persuaded them with the warm weather and the, the lovely benefits, what happens in terms of onboarding? So the majority of our people, uh, so I'd say 85% of the workforce is from overseas, so an expatriate mm -hmm. uh, workforce. We look after their onboarding um, in terms of their joining ticket, we provide them an in corporate induction. We provide them temporary accommodation if they're not eligible for their uh, accommodation as part of their package to make sure that they're fully up to speed once they've got their visa stamped. Everyone needs a visa in Dubai, a work permit. So once that is stamped, then they can open their bank account, do those sorts of things. And we sort of hold, hand hold them through that process to make sure then when they're ready to work, they're operational on that day. So we give them a week to get all their briefings done and then they start work. So obviously then they'll start their training. If it's cabin crew, it's six weeks. If it's pilots, depending on which aircraft flight um, they join, 
and that will dictate their training schedule, but then all the paperwork is done so they can focus on work. Yeah. The work for, I guess, cabin crews and, and, and pilots is very different to a, a nine to five office job. Um, obviously, going across different time zones, different countries, hours, weeks, days, it's, it's, it's a very unusual work pattern for you know the, the normal the more public person. So, from a HR perspective, how do you manage that? Well, it, it is a challenge because of the mobile uh, workforce. However, they have um, they have their own fleet. For if it's pilots, they have a fleet that they can go to. We have a very good uh, Emirates Medical Centre to make sure that they are fit to fly. We have health and nutrition aspect in the cabin crew training college to make sure that they, and they're briefed as part of their training how to look after themselves, how to make sure that they don't suffer from jet lag, how to make sure that they're always looking fresh on board, um, that their nutrition and fitness is, is um, up to the optimum level. So there is, there's that support me mechanism already for them. Yeah. One of the things that's been in the news um, across, across all airlines, and, and this is, is a massive challenge, I guess, from the, the very early stages in the pipeline, is, is diversity. Um, what's Emirates doing? I mean, they're, they're, they're a champion for it, I guess, in, in a sense, but what are you guys doing to really sort of help to improve diversity? Well, on the Emirates side, we launched a campaign called Hello Tomorrow, and one of the key drivers of that is uh, Globalista, so those cosmopolitan, um, adventurous, um, curious mindset to join. That's where we look for that. Those are the key parts of looking for our cabin crew because we want people to be adventurous. We want them to be curious, um, to be able to live that lifestyle. You go west on your schedule, you'll come back to Dubai and you'll go east. It's not for everyone. It is hard work, but it takes, it's a, it takes a certain type of person to be able to do that. And as long as you look after your fitness and your nutrition and your sleeping patterns, which, you know, to be fair, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. It's, it's you know, west one week and, or within the week and then you go east. So the, the company is mindful of that. Um, so we make sure that we've given them all the tools to be able, for them to be able to um, maintain a, a healthy lifestyle and also um, look after our customers. So. Emirates has a very prestigious brand um, for the customer. In terms of your employer brand, what are you doing to make that shine just as... As, as much as the Emirates one does? Well, we've launched uh, the Hello Tomorrow, so it's a, an external and an internal brand campaign, awareness campaign, and that's, ba that's basically Hello Tomorrow, which symbolises the cosmopolitan nature of our staff and our um, customers. We look for those that are adventurous and curious. We have a high retention uh, amongst our staff. I think we have 2, 000, over 3,000 staff that have been with the company more than 20 years. Uh, so I don't believe there's a, an attrition um, issue. Um, and because we look after our people very well. I mean, obviously, some pockets of the business have higher attrition than others. However, amongst our customer-facing ones, the attrition rate uh, is quite low. Mm. The, we look after our people. I think that's why they want to stay in Dubai is such a, a great place to live. And it's in the middle of the world, so part of the benefits of working for an airline are that you can get staff travel tickets um, quite cheaply, subject to a space availability, but that allows you an opportunity from Dubai to get to Australia in 14 hours, to get to San Francisco in 16 hours, to get back to Europe, to, to go to Asia. So that's another benefit. Um, so we seek the globalist... Um, um, values in our staff as well so that they can um, look after the customer in an optimal and understand what the customer also needs. And you've talked about how your staff can can go from Dubai and, and go all over the place but obviously when you're recruiting you're recruiting from from everywhere so I imagine it's quite diverse. Yes we have over 160 nationalities I think as, as of today it does change um, currently in the company and with regard to cabin crew recruitment, we would do up to 60 trips a month going overseas to make sure that we've, we've met the commercial target in, in the terms of there must be a, a native speaker on that flight. So, for example, if we're flying to Germany, we want a German native speaker. We always have an Arabic speaker on every flight. Uh, if we're going to a new destination, we will then have to go ahead and recruit those people ready for the first flight so we get a heads up. So we work very closely with uh, cabin crew manpower 
our commercial departments to make sure that we have the right staff with the right languages on those flights. For example, which may seem surprising, is we need Bengali speakers on our Rome flights and we need Mandarin speakers on our Lusaka African flights because of the number of the work of the nature of the workforce. So it's not just that you need a German speaker because you're going to Germany, but there could be a large part of the customer base that also needs that speak, like Bengali speakers to Rome. Uh, yeah, so we work very closely with commercial. Every month we have a meeting to make sure we're on track with our numbers. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us, and uh, good luck with everything. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.